servants are here to roast you, but we only roast those we love. And if you believe that, I have some <laughs> swampland in New Jersey I'd like to load on you. We have some great personalities. I'm sorry, you're great friends. I think it was Will Rogers who said, I never met a man I didn't like. Well, conversely, I never met a person in show business that doesn't love Joe Franklin. <laughs> Some great personalities to honor him, ladies and gentlemen. All of them here with love. I don't know why I'm... Come at me like bookends. Look at this. <laughs> Rocky Graziano has never known the meaning of the word defeat. Besides thousands of other words, he never known the meaning of. <laughs> you can't recognize him too much. He's uh, standing illiterate but beautiful. I like him, and when he talks, you will notice, ladies and gentlemen, that he remembers his old days as a fighter because he's never removed his mouthpiece. He still talks with. He's just written. His first book, ladies and gentlemen, it's the first book he ever wrote, or it was the first book he ever wrote. In fact, it's the first book he ever read, too. <laughs> I introduce to you with infinite disdain, ladies and gentlemen, a brilliant, ubiquitous, and I might say efficient, if not subservient, I'll use words, you put them wherever you think they belong. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Rocky Graziano. Well, I don't know what the hell he said, because the words were a little too big for me, but... A guy called me... No, I'm just kidding, I'm full of shit. But, Joe Franklin is a hell of a nice guy. It was the first book he ever wrote. In fact, it's the first book he ever read, too. I introduce to you with infinite disdain, ladies and gentlemen, a brilliant, ubiquitous, and I might say efficient if not subservient, I'll use words, you put them wherever you think they belong. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Rocky Graziano. Well, I don't know what the hell he said, because the words were a little too big for me, but... A guy called me... No, I'm just kidding, I'm full of shit. <laughs> but... Joe Franklin is a hell of a nice guy. He's one guy that says, Rocky, anytime you want to come to my goddamn show, I'll be here. And he's a beautiful guy. Listeners that are here tonight. I, are you ready? Not yet. Not yet. When there's a lull, I'll introduce you. Uh, sitting at my left, ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest musicians and artists in the history of our business. Unfortunately, Cy Oliver does not know Joe Franklin but the NAACP insisted that we invite him. <laughs> what the hell is Joe Franklin knows? Oh, he's still writing fan letters to Vilma Banke <laughs> and Mary Miles Minter. But when it comes to jazz, Joe is an expert, and I agree with him. This week, he still, still can see him at the American Hotel. He's a gentleman of jazz. He's a gentleman of class. And as long as he's around, this great music will be remembered. Ladies and gentlemen, with great joy, I introduce Mr. Cy Oliver. Thank you very much for this overwhelming reception. In front of me. A can of bumblebee salmon I couldn't get. I'm so unlucky, I bought a suit the other day with two pair of pants. I burned the hole in the coat. <laughs> but this is a beautiful luncheon. I'm here because he gives me passes. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't need them. These? <laughs> Just busy, busy, busy. A piece of famine. I'm with one of the biggest agencies in the world, Saul Glickman Orchestra. They booked me in Las Vegas during the atomic bomb tests. I'm in Miami during the hurricane season. I'm in Boston during Holy Week. I finish here this afternoon. I go to Lowe's, Africa. Now, I didn't think I was going to be here this afternoon. Joe called me, uh, today's 
Thursday, he called me Tuesday, stuck, couldn't get out. I run in the room, she covers herself like this, she says, for God's sake, get me help, get me help. I said, okay, don't go away. <laughs> I saw a sailor's hat on the wall, I took it off and I threw it, I says, cover yourself where you need it the most. And I brought up the plumber. Who am I going to bring up, a dealer? I brought up the plumber and I said to the plumber, plumber, well, what do you think? He says, well, the lady I could save, but the sailor's too far gone. <laughs> You, how much he's meant to my sisters and me for a long, long time. Joe is a kind of man, I, I call him a yes man, and the best way a yes man could be, you call him up and say, Joe, could you help me? And his answer is, anything, darling, what can I do? And that's quite unusual in this day and age, as you all know. The latest thing he's done for me is, I am married to a wonderful clergyman, an Episcopal clergyman, and we have a church in Murray Hill. And we started a theater group out there thinking it would be a good thing for everybody, and, and they love it. But we had kind of a rough time getting it started. There wasn't too much uh, interest in it at first, so what did I do? I called Joe and told him about it. He said, Patty, would you like to be on my show and tell everybody about it? I said, Joe, I'd love it. So we set the date, and I went on his show and we talked about our little theater group out there and now it's all sold out and uh, it's just absolutely marvelous he's done it again for the pickens and we love him very very much and joe to paraphrase the late great duke ellington we all love you madly boring pain in the ass this guy is, I tell you right now. <laughs> Thrown teeth out of his mouth for at least 40 years. <laughs> he did it when he was driving a cab. That's why I don't drive a cab no more. He's marvelous. Gene's a great, great ad liver. Marvelous. What's the joke, Gene? You better know how so slow the arrest of the jock of a kidnapping. You said that one Thursday. It's marvelous. I can see you don't like that joke either. Okay, now, before I start to sing, oh, we're going to... What the hell are you doing, my God? <laughs> you know, it's amazing. When I worked this joint, nobody surfed. <laughs> now that you got guys out here, those put the damn thing down. Don't serve nothing. You ain't gonna get nothing here anyway. The goddamn hand was enough. <laughs> the melon was terrible. The salad was grass. And I'm sitting next to the head of WRTV. He goes, and I'm still the head of WRTV. I said, who gives a goddamn who you are the head of? As I know the guy of a Metro Media person, he's a fag. So what the hell is the difference? <laughs> Is that it? Is that it? No, no. What are you goosing me for? I said the word fag, he gives me a goose. Look at this guy. It's nice, it's nice. I just hope your station continues to go where it's going to go. You think you're on television. I think it's color radio is what I think it is. It's a marvelous station. They show, you have to be honest, they show old pictures. Real old pictures. They had a uh, Bobby Breen festival. Now that's heavy. That's heavy. Then they're going to have uh, two weeks in honor of the San Gennaro feast, the Henry Armetta. <laughs> Yellow. But these are the marvelous things. That's why, see, it's easy. CBS, NBC, ABC, that's easy. It's ORTV and those kind of things that, the nerve. <laughs> that these guys get licenses. They are lights is what they are. You got to go to the toilet and put nine on and you never get in trouble. <laughs> If I had to put nine on, I'd never go to the toilet. What do you think of that? <laughs> I'm funny today. I'll tell you that right now. Like what are you that. writing here? These guys write things. I don't understand. Joe, you're not going to say anything after this thing is over. <laughs> Still with the uh, beverage. Hoffman beverage? He is the original burp. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Henry. What are you? He's, come on. Pat's going to do this, right? <laughs> Pat Henry. For those who don't know who Pat Henry is, he is, uh, always works days. He gives up jobs to do these kind of things. He really does. He gives up jobs to do all this stuff freebie. That's why nobody knows who the hell he is. He's a good friend. Uh, you know what killed me? How they can mistake him and I? I got glasses. I'm tall. I'm better looking. I'm funnier. So they'll keep calling me. Well, you'll be on in about a few minutes. Eh? See? See? You're a bore like him. See? Look. He's looking at all. That's all right. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, before I walk off, please do me a favor. Please. Don't stand. Stay where you are. Days just to wipe the smile off his face. <laughs> A couple are married 12 years, they go on a second honeymoon, they go to Pittsburgh. He's a salesman, 
figured he'd call on some people at the same time, check into a motel, go to bed, and morning gets up. The motel happened to be right opposite a railroad station. Check in a motel, have a wonderful night's sleep. He gets up in the morning, goes to call on some clients. She's in bed alone. When a train passes by, the vibration of the train knocks her out of bed. Crawls back into bed. Ten minutes later, another train passes by. Vibration knocks her out of bed. Fifteen minutes later, another train pa- Vibration knocks her out of bed. She calls the clerk downstairs. I don't believe you. Come up and see for yourself. So what's the trouble? She says, I'm lying in bed. Every time a train passes by, the vibration knocks me out of bed. He says, I don't believe it. Lie down and see for yourself. <laughs> lying in bed when the husband comes in. Says, what the hell are you doing in my bed? Says, believe it or not, I'm waiting for a train. <laughs> Hell of a time to introduce you while they're serving food, but I want to introduce you. You were the first guest that Joe Franklin ever had on the air with him. Look where I am today. <laughs> You're the last guest. It's a joy to have you here. <laughs> See, so many memories. I had a little TV show of my own here in New York on Channel 12, and uh, <laughs> just like his show, a ghost from 11. And uh, all of them. And Joe and I go back so many years, you know, I tell you, my mother wanted to be here tonight. My mother lives in Roslyn, and she goes to Miami. That's it. Roslyn, Miami. Well, where else would a Jewish couple go? Guam? (laughs) They live in a great section of Miami. You're talking about the average age is deceased. This is a section of Miami that's great that my folks go to. There it's considered a good deed for a boy scout to help an old woman to cross her legs. Uh, great things happening in your future, and they're going to move your career on and the whole thing. Well, they're half right. Joe is not a big star. Um, you know, seven years ago, when Malcolm was moving, uh, well, the contract was just canceled. <laughs> Uh, there, there were other reasons, though. Let me tell you about the other reasons. Uh, one of our favorite segments. Now, the only problem is, Joe always tells more than the show. <laughs>
If any of you have ever, ever wondered why the station has reached the lofty heights it has, <laughs> here is your answer. <laughs> uh, I will be very brief. Uh, as somebody once said, to stop the levity for a moment. We do want you to say a few words, but before that, I want to introduce Morty Gunty, who is normally not, does not tell you something interesting and make it exciting for his wife. So he brought along his Leon Arrow films, and uh, <laughs> the Joe Franklin viewers, you know, are on the list of endangered species. I don't know if that's a true thing or not. I had that somewhere. Anyway, uh, I had a lot of little things I wanted to say about Joe, but I'm sure they've been said a zillion times before. So the only thing that I would really like to do is, uh, you know, being a comedian, you hear funny stories, you hear cute things around the city of New York. And I heard a cute little story the other day that I must tell you about this 90-year-old man who lives in New York City, 90 years old, a wonderful age to be, 90 years old. And he's going to retire to Florida because he bought a condominium. 90-year-old man bought a condominium with a 40-year mortgage. And uh, he decides to go to Florida because of the energy crisis and the fuel shortage. He's going to go on his bicycle going to drive from New York to Miami on a bicycle. He gets on his bike and he starts to pedal. He gets halfway down, somewhere around Georgia, when he gets very, very tired, and he parks the bike on the side of the road and he's resting. And all of a sudden, a fellow comes by in a Jaguar, sees the old man on the ground. He says, hey, Pop, everything all right? Everything's okay. Where are you going, Pop? Going to Florida. Me too, jump in, I'll take you. He says, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. You use the car, I want to use the bike. Well, they argue back and forth, and finally the fellow in the Jaguar felt so sorry for the old man on the bike, he says, look, Pop, I have a great idea. I'm going to Florida, you're going to Florida. Let me help you. Let me tow you to Florida. We'll hook up the bike to the back of the Jag with a rope, and I'll pull you to Florida. Here's a whistle. If I go too fast, boop, you blow the whistle, I'll slow down. He says, terrific. So they hook up the bike to the back. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the uh, standing ovation. I want to thank you for that nice round of applause, that nice round of indifference. No, seriously, I'm not going to do my comedy routine now. I just want to say that it's... Uh,